Uh, in this video, I have this top loader. It is a Panasonic NAFS 14G. What happens is when it has an unbalanced load, the tub here bounces, which is quite normal. But the problem is the washing machine does not cut out. It does not adapt to the bouncing. So it just literally goes bouncing and next thing you hear ka, 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 ka. So somehow the safety mechanism is not working and I'm going to demonstrate what is wrong and I'm going to demonstrate how to check this and solve it. All right, so there's a screw on each side here. Sometimes the screw is hidden by a little sticker. All right, so there's also one on this side and there's two at the back. Now, because I'm working on the back here, and I'm also going to take this cover off, it's worthwhile to disconnect these hoses and then obviously switch off the power. So I've switched off the power and I'm unplugging it and I'm just switching off the water. Now I'm just going to disconnect these hoses. Uh, there will be a bit of water. That's normal. Right, I can now lift this up. Might be a bit wedged. Now I don't lift it up wildly. I'm just checking if it needs to slide up or if there's anything holding at the back there. So there we go. I'm just checking. Looks all right. I can now lift it. Right. So when I lift it up, I'm very careful not to snap anything that's here. And there's normally like a lever or a pin that monitors the motion of this drum. And I can feel that it's actually gone. So I'm going to just open up the back and show you what I'm talking about. Now I'm here at the back and I've just loosened this to get this cover off and over there is the safety system. So what happens is it's wired in such a way that if you open the lid, I'm not sure if you can see at the back there, there's a wire that is formed and it actually gets here towards the lid. And when I open the lid, it's moving up and down. It's basically like a limit switch. Obviously most washing machines, when you open the lid, it will stop it from spinning. So it basically cuts off the supply. So the thing is, on this washing machine, this has two safety systems. The one is if you open the lid. And the other one is if the drum rotates too much and the machine starts knocking. Because these machines are quite light, they're able to wobble a bit and it can be quite dangerous. I noticed that when I looked underneath, there was no like finger. Like what I was expecting was a finger that was to, to monitor the tub. Now here I have a limit switch. Now this kind of works in the same way. When the motion goes beyond a certain point, the switch actually closes or opens depending on how you wire it. This is a, called a cat's whisker limit switch and in any direction, if you move it too much, it actually opens a circuit. So this is the proper way to do it, but this is expensive. So obviously in the washing machines, they don't opt for this type of thing. They do a cheaper plastic story. And I think this is what the problem is on this machine. So I'm just going to remove the lid to give me some more space. There's a screw over here and there's one on the other side. So this is the top face. So it just gives me some room to just lift this up a bit. I've got to be careful with the way I lift this. I don't want to damage it. This is an expensive part of the washing machine, especially if you crack the front face here. All right, so the one is out. All right, so there's a better view of this guy over here. And I'm going to unscrew it. Now, I'm just going to be careful because there's this little wire that runs here. Um, by the way, there's the lid. So you might have a better view of how this limit switch works. So I'm just going to... Kind of unhook it there. Yeah, there we go. So there it comes. There's the plastic limit switch and I'll quickly show you what it does. Right, so I brought a multimeter here and I've set it to continuity, which means it will measure if there's a short circuit. If I put the leads together, you should hear the beeping and the zero. So that means it's a dead short. Right, so I'm going to quickly show you what happens here with this switch. Right, so I'm going to unplug this. It doesn't matter which way it goes. So I'm going to put the one lead there and the one lead on there. Now at the moment it's an open circuit. So that means it's a fault condition or the machine must cut out. Now remember that when the lid was closed, it was actually in that position. So that's a closed condition, which means that the machine must operate. So that's correct. And that means there's a problem. This is in an open orientation. That is a fault. On this machine, that means there's a fault. What I mean by a fault means the lid is open or the drum is, is rotating wildly. So it triggers an open circuit. So remember, it was under pressure. It was a closed circuit. And that means the lid was closed and everything was fine. But if I open the lid, it actually did that. Then it tells the main controller that the lid is open. Right, so what the problem is, is if I look here, <laughs> there's a part missing. <laughs> this is the lever for the lid. But there, where's the lever for the drum movement? So it's obviously fallen inside the machine. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up and look for a plastic piece that probably has a finger that goes in there. Right, so good news, I found this on the floor of the machine. I lifted up the machine and this was there. So this is what I was expecting. I'm a little bit concerned because it looks like there's only half of it. It looks like there was definitely a break here. It looks like this finger was much longer. Anyway, so let me uh, now put this next to this and I see that this is definitely supposed to be part of this because there's even uh, the holes there would line up and it looks like that would line up with that, although it does look like something's missing there as well. Oh, and then I see there's a piece of plastic inside there that is freely moving and that shouldn't be there. So yeah, there's a broken piece there and I guess the remaining is inside there. So I guess what happened here is somebody aggressively opened this cover, bent it backwards instead of lifting, going upwards, they actually kind of flipped it backwards and probably snapped this or the machine was going crazy and uh, it actually broke this thing off, which I think is unlikely because that would be quite a bad design by Panasonic in this case. All right, so I'm gonna open this uh, lever and then inspect it. Right, so here's this unit. I'm just gonna open it up quickly. You can see there's a piece of plastic that has uh, been deposited there and that's most definitely from here. Yes, yeah, so that's a perfect fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly try and repair this. I'm going to use a combination of super glue and plastic welding and thereafter I'm going to try and extend this and uh, see if I can get this uh, lever back to normal. Alright, so the first step is to clean it with alcohol. This is not sanitizer. This is alcohol with no glycol in it. And I just clean it because I'm going to glue it and I don't want any oil on the surfaces. Alright, so that's clean and this guy over here. And then I just clean my fingertips to make sure I've got no oil on my fingers. Right, so the first step is I'm going to do the super glue. I'm just going to put a little bit there on the paper. I don't put the super glue directly on the plastic because it tends to go everywhere. And I just paint this on there. I can even dip this. I'm just going to dip it in there. Right, so it goes like that. Right, so the super glue is just holding it in place. Now you could leave this to dry for a while and you could just use other glue. Uh, you could use the cube bond and those glues to build this up, but I prefer the plastic welding because I don't want it to be brittle. Okay, so what would happen is this finger would go there and do that. So how this works is the lid is closed, so it's like that. But then when there's excessive movement in the tub, this would then move like that. That finger would then push this side here away again opening the circuit so an open circuit tells the controller there's a problem right so the super glue is almost dry and i'm taking a soldering iron and i'm just going to do some plastic welding all i'm doing is i'm just melting around this finger but i've got to be careful because that finger is a specific width if i make it too fat it's not going to fit through here or i'll have to widen that hole so what i'm doing is i'm just taking a bit of the plastic from the side of the finger and I'm rolling it over the cracked part. So I'm almost smearing it and then I'm holding the soldering iron towards the bottom part so that it actually melts together with the plastic that is still functional or still in place. So it doesn't matter how it looks, I just want to put it in here. So the uh, thickness is fine but I'm going to just as a precaution, I'm just going to widen this a little bit so that I've got scope to do more plastic welding. Right, so I've actually widened that hole in order to allow me to add some plastic here on the side to make it strong. So I'm just going to take some plastic from here and I'm going to deposit it on the side. Just taking my side cutters and just kind of stealing a little bit of plastic from here. All right, so I just took a little bit of plastic from this lid. All right, there's three pieces of plastic which I'm going to add and I melt it into the plastic that's already there it must melt so I'm melting it and I'm swirling it and it's kind of like a mixture now and then I poke my iron in and then I pull it back and I'm just mixing right now I reform it now I just get the shape right this is better than super glue because the super glue is brittle so if you bump it it breaks okay so there's that piece just to demonstrate, it's not going anywhere. And, and it's strong in that orientation, that orientation, it's actually flipping hot and burning my fingers. Okay, so now I just wanna see that it fits back in here. So I've gotta make sure that it's smooth where it uh, engages with that leaf spring because I don't want it to be rough.
but if it was rough you could just uh, use a little file and just smooth it out you want smooth edges so that it engages with that leaf spring in a smooth manner oh perfect look at that that is perfect and very little lateral movement so we're back in business here i can put the leaf springs back in right so there's the functionality of that and i'll put the other one in which now makes me realize that what goes over here is a spring a spring is meant to keep this open so there we go the lid of the washing machine is closed uh, it's under normal conditions it's a closed circuit you can see the contacts touching each other but when the tub spins vigorously there it opens it right so now i'm just going to spray a contact cleaner just to clean the contacts there they look a little bit corroded and i can put the lid on right so i'm putting the cover on now to keep it in place right so this is actually functional the only problem is there was a spring here now i've located some springs i took it out of an old solenoid um, if i put these two together it kind of works so that's what i'm going for and then don't forget that gravity will also pull this down remember that the full length is not here so i still have to extend this All right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this pipe so it's going to be like that so i'm just going to cut uh, what's going to be too long and always cut it shorter right so that's what it's going to be like i'm going to insert this into here so which means i'm going to have to squish this a bit yes it is a bit fatter but i'm sure it's actually going to be fine if you have a look at it it's just a couple of millimeters so i'm going to squeeze the opening here that actually would work so i just need to remove some of this here it's a bit fat so all i need to do now is make sure this is stuck in here so i just have to glue it all right so i'm just putting some cold glue inside here right there's the new lever i'm going to reinstall this into the washing machine right so there's quite a big hole there so i'm not worried about the size of the hole uh, this is going to sit like that it goes inside there if it's too long i'll cut it probably is quite long but there you are, there we go, sits inside, just get this the right way around. Right, so I can just put these screws back. Right, there's the meter, I've got the leads there, and the front of the washing machine is closed. That is why it's making that beeping sound. There's a beep, it means it's short circuit, it means that the limit switch is actually closed, which means there's no fault condition. If I try and open the door, can you hear that that buzzing goes away? So that part of the limit switch is working correctly. Right, so now I've opened the door. Right, I can override this thing by just taking my screwdriver and lifting this up. See there? Now, why that's important is I'm actually going to leave it like that. Right, so I have the meter there, and you might be able to see through the lid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open the lid a bit, and that limit switch is staying closed because, remember, I've overridden it with my screwdriver. Now, you might be able to see my hand here and the drum in the background. Now watch what happens, I can move this drum a bit and nothing's happening, but when I go a bit too much, there we go, that lever is now opening that limit switch. And if I let the drum go, perfect. Right, so there is that lever, if I, and if I move the drum right to the end, there you can see uh, it's squashed, and then it's fine again. So the drum can move, but the minute it goes too much, it engages that lever. Might need some tweaking, but for now, I think it's fixed. Right, so I can plug in these connectors now. Doesn't matter which way they go. And now I just return the screws and test it. Right, the machine is working correctly. If it's got a balanced load, it does not knock that limit switch. But if it is unbalanced and it starts to wobble quite a lot, then it taps that limit switch. That limit switch sends a signal to the controller. The controller, what it does is it takes the cycle back a little bit, refills with water in the hope that by refilling with water and running the cycle again, it can reorganize the items, the clothing in the drum so that it is a balanced load. So that's actually the mechanism of this machine. Uh, overall, this is now working. It is now safe because that limit switch is now back in place. Thanks for watching and cheers.